everyone. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you're watching, either on the ESPN app or Top Ranks YouTube page. I'm Christina Poncher. I'm so happy to be back here hosting in person with other fighters today and our Top Rank family. Uh, as some of you may have heard, uh, Joe Smith Jr. and Maxime Vlasov has been postponed due to Vlasov testing positive for COVID-19. But we will move on with still a triple header on ESPN Saturday night starting at 7 p.m. The new headlining bout will be Richard Comey taking on Jackson Marinez in a 10-round lightweight contest. And then our new co-feature now is Adam Blue Nose Lopez taking on Jason Sanchez for the NABF featherweight belt that Adam Lopez won in his last bout. So that's moved now to co-main. And then opening the ESPN telecast at 7 p.m. will be Toledo's own heavyweight, Jared Anderson, taking on, I guess we can call him a bubble veteran now, <laughs> with Kingsley eBay. Um, so that's going to open the telecast 7 p.m. Pacific time on ESPN. Now, prior to the 7 p.m. start, we have a undercard that is stacked with some really promising young talent. That's going to get started at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Some of the fighters you'll see on ESPN Plus on that undercard are Eric Puente, Jahai Tucker, and then there's two pro debuts of two guys that were really, really good U.S. amateur standouts. Troy Isley and Las Vegas' own Floyd Diaz will both be in separate bouts on the undercard. So still a great night of boxing despite our main event being postponed. We hope you join us 5.15 Pacific time for the undercard, 7 p.m. Pacific time for the triple header on ESPN. Now, you guys get moved up now to a main event. Not unfamiliar territory for you, and you're used to fighting on national television by now. And if I could start first with Jackson Marinez, El Phoenix. Uh, Gardy Lopez is going to translate for me, so thank you, Gardy. Appreciate you. Um, Jackson, coming off the controversial loss to Rolando Romero, uh, I'm sure you've gone back and watched that fight a few times. What's your biggest takeaway from, from that experience in that fight? Eh, luego de la derrota controversial contra eh, Rolly Romero, eh, ¿qué es lo más que te puedes llevar de esa experiencia en esa pelea? Bueno, primeramente, eh, buenas tardes. Eh, bendecido con Dios por, porque nos entramos hoy aquí con salud y, y vida y esta gran oportunidad. Después de esta pelea con, con Rolando Romero, muy controversial, que ya todos saben lo que, lo que sucedió, este, simplemente nos llevamos eh, que se nos han abierto bien, eh, se nos han abierto la puerta, ya el mundo reconoció, el mundo de voceo reconoce lo que pasó ese día, me ven como, como el campeón sin corona y es algo que, que estoy muy agradecido. Uh, first of all, good afternoon. Uh, thanks to God for having us all here with good health. Uh, about the uh, experience of fighting uh, Mariñez, you know, the whole world saw what, what happened. Uh, right now, I, I see myself as a king without a crown. Uh, and even though I lost in controversial fashion, uh, it opened up uh, bigger opportunities for me, and I'm, I'm taking full advantage of them. Yeah, one of the things that had been talked about was the fact that whether a rematch was offered or not, uh, Romero saying one thing, you saying another, but one thing that is a fact is you are fighting the better opposition in a former world champion in Richard Comey. Your thoughts on the opportunity now at hand to step up in competition and fight Comey. Se ha hablado de, de, de varias eh, versiones de lo que pasó con Romero. Te ofrecieron la revancha, dicen ellos, tú dices que no, pero a pesar de, de lo que dicen ellos, pues tú estás enfrentando ahora mismo una mejor oposición en Comey. Eh, ¿Qué te parece eso de, de estar enfrentando a un peleador de, de la talla que ha sido campeón como Richard Comey? Eh, sí, esto, esto es algo que he escuchado mucho, pero eh, déjame decirle que, que no, que es mentira. A mí nunca se me ofreció la, la pelea. Nosotros, mi equipo y yo, y fuimos lo, que, lo interesado en buscarle una revancha y, y duramos alrededor de tres meses, cuatro meses, tocando puertas, eh, haciendo entrevistas para ver si nos daban la revancha y no nos comunicaron nada. Hasta que ellos se enteraron que, que iban, eh, se nos presentó una buena oportunidad Eh, eh, y comenzaron a hablar en las redes que, que sí se nos ofrecieron, eso es mentira. Eh, y me siento bien, bien, bien orgulloso, bien emocionado, eh, porque voy a enfrentar un, un gran bolsador, un bolsador bastante experimentado, como es Richard Comey, un bolsador que, que es campeón mundial. Es algo, algo eh, que me tiene muy, muy, muy eh, 
eh, activo en mi deporte. You got all that? Yeah. Okay. I, ju I just want to make it clear that we never got offered the, the rematch. Uh, we were looking for it, for it. We were, you know, in media doing interviews looking for it, and it never happened. When they saw that after a couple of months I got this big opportunity against Kami, that's when they went to social media and started saying that I was, you know, ducking them. I didn't want to face them again. But, you know, right now I have a great opponent in front of me, a former world champion, and I'm ready to take advantage of this opportunity. I'm very excited and I'm very, I'm very proud of facing someone like Kami. How do you prepare? I mean, you have one of the best trainers in the world and, and Robert Garcia in your corner and the, the amount of quality sparring that you get at RGBA. So do you feel like the opportunity at this point in your preparation is coming at the right time, especially with the statement that you could make to the lightweight division and the talent rich division that is at 135? Ahora que tienes un buen entrenador, uno de los mejores en el mundo como Robert Garcia y que tienes buen sparring en la academia de boxeo de Robert, este, sientes que esta es la oportunidad donde vas ahora a crear un, a enviar un mensaje a toda la división eh, en esta pelea contra Comi. Así, así mismo, así mismo, este, eh, déjame decirte que, que estar en este campamento es algo que te da mucha confianza, porque estamos rodeados de, de campeones mundiales y buena vibra, los muchachos con buen compañerismo. Eh, y, y un entrenador excelente como es Robert García que, que, que te aconseja tanto en, en, lo, en lo deportivo como en lo personal eh, es algo, algo bien grande estamos bien, estamos y tuvimos una buena preparación para este compromiso para saber si, si Dios quiere salir con la, por la puerta grande y escribir nuestro nombre en el in, in este peso que está bastante caliente, que la 135 libre. Uh, he has been a great experience training uh, with Robert Garcia and all, you know, uh, being around so many champions, so many great sparring partners. Uh, you know, and Robert, like you said, is one of the best. Like, he advises me in my career uh, in the ring, but also personally. Uh, you know, there's always good vibes uh, in, the, in, the, in the training camp. And right now, I'm looking just to put my name in this division right now that is red hot. It definitely is a red hot division. And if I can go now to Richard Combe, the other half of our main event, uh, speaking of a red hot division, the, the king of the division, many would believe now, is, is the undisputed champion in Tiafimo Lopez, the fighter that you were last across the ring from now 13 months ago. Um, you too in a position uh, right now to seek some redemption, just like your opponent. Uh, from going back and watching that fight, not sure how many times that, that you've watched it, but kind of where is your mindset and what have you taken away from that experience to make sure that something like that doesn't happen again, especially Saturday night? Yeah, first of all, I want to thank God for this opportunity. It's been, um, it's been almost uh, over a year since I, fought. I lost my, uh, my fight with Teofimo, and it's been, I mean, ever since... Uh, I think it, it was a little bit hard for me to take it because I didn't really expect that. I trained so hard, but you know, whatever happens, happens now. It's gone. And then I learned what I had to learn from me. I learned my lesson. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's redemption time for Kome because I still got a lot in there and I want to be a two time world champion. So, definitely, this is it. So, you say it's a redemption time. Uh, right. So, do you feel like, with that being said, you feel like there's a little something to prove maybe to the lightweight division or maybe even to yourself or no? I don't feel like I have anything Not to prove. Really. I don't have much to prove myself, but it's all about really want to be a two-time world champion. So it's time for me. Now this opportunity, once I win this fight, I know there's, there'll be a lot of doors open for me because the lightweight division is packed now. We saw it. So winning this fight will just put me back in the mix of it and then definitely we know what happens in the future. I know in talking to different fighters that have been preparing throughout this pandemic, it's been challenging to get good sparring. And obviously you can only control so much of, of what happens in your gym and with uh, Andre Rozier. But do you feel right now at 33 years old and an opportunity against a fighter that, you know, is, is coming off a controversial decision that this is the right fight for you to take at this time um, in your career? And what would a win, uh, where do you feel like that puts you in the division of 135? Yeah, most definitely. I think uh, it's the right time because I've come, I'm coming back for a Lose and, and of a lose, and he's also coming back of a lose. So, I mean, it makes sense. Like, it's a great fight. I've, I've seen him, and you know, what I mean, it's a great fight for me to come back, you know, what I mean, to the miss, and it is what it is. Were you, um, this is a, a tad bit off topic, but I know a lot of people are wondering, did you watch uh, Tia Fimo's fight against Vasily Lomachenko? Yeah, what I were did. your what, thoughts on that fight? Well, I thought it was a close fight, and yeah, I mean, the best, the best uh, uh, boss that I had the deal on the night won it, but I thought it was a close fight. But did you think Tia Fimo won the fight? Yeah, I did.
Now, do you feel like if the opportunity were to present itself, I know you've said a couple of times without hindering on the past that you wish you had a little bit more time in that second round? Yeah, most that definitely. Because I've, I've, honestly, I wasn't really off. I wasn't dizzy. I wasn't a, I thought the river should have given me the chance to pull myself a little bit more. But I mean, it happens because I was all right. You know what I mean? But things happen for a reason. So, you know, it's past now. All I got to do is just focus on uh, uh, winning this fight and then becoming the two-time world champion. That's what is in my mind right now. With, with you and, and Uncle Dre, without giving away too much of the game plan, what are some things that you have to do on Saturday night uh, to make sure that you can walk away victorious and kind of throw your name back in that hat? Uh, well, obviously, uh, obviously, I don't really have to make some uh, mistake that I think I did in the uh, in, in the fight with uh, Teofimo, you know what I mean? And there are certain mistakes that I didn't really have to repeat it. So you just have to be there, just take my time, and then do what I got to do, you know, listen to the corner and do what I have to do just to win, yeah. Did you watch um, Marina's fight against Rolando Romero, his, his yeah, last fight? What did you, yeah. did you think he won the fight? Yeah, I think he won the fight. I think he did win the fight. Yeah, yeah, so both have something to prove. Trying to get back into the win column on Saturday night in the main event now. Mm -hmm. I mean, albeit at the cost of... a of yeah. COVID-19, but it's familiar territory for you. You know what it's like to fight in a main event right, on national right. television. Always, it's always sad when you put all the hard work in and then, you know what I mean, at the last minute, you can't fight. It's sad, but I mean, it, sorry, my, excuse my language, it really hurts, but you know what I mean, I feel for them because I'm a boxer as well. If it happened to me, I would feel very bad. So, but I pray that whatever, whatever I have to quarantine himself will be, I mean, we reco recover fast and then I may get a chance to fight again. Yeah, yeah. I, I look forward to hopefully seeing them back in the ring. But for now, you guys will hold it down in the main event. It's going down on Saturday night. And let me also uh, tell you congratulations on the birth of your daughter in October. You You've much. become a daddy since we've seen you last. Thank so you. God bless. baby girl, baby girl on the way. <laughs> Good things happening all around. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And um, we're going to have you pose for some pictures. But just uh, quick notes, undercard again, new start time for the undercards on ESPN Plus will be 515 Pacific Time, ESPN Plus for the undercard action, 7 p.m. Pacific Time for the triple header on ESPN. Tomorrow, the weigh-ins are taking place from right here inside the bubble at 1 p.m. Pacific. Those will be streamed live on ESPN Plus. So for Jackson and Richard, I'm Christina Poncher. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.